Hi, I'm Lauren. And I'm Alex. And we're two friends who moved out of the big city to see what this small town life was all about. We're passionate about health, wellness, relationships, and entrepreneurial spirit. Listen in weekly to hear all the wild details. This is That's Wild. What's up, you guys? It's Lauren and Alex. I'm so excited to get into this episode with you guys. Not only are Tiffany Tyler, the founders of Glamfetti, a very large online and now brick and mortar party decor store, um, but they're also two of my very close friends. Um, and I think what's really cool about them is that they did the same thing that we did. They moved out to small town Texas, um, kind of just with the dream of, you know, having more of a free upbringing for their kids, more of an outdoor life, more of the simple life while they still have this thriving business. So we're going to learn today about who they are, about how they work together as husband and wife, because I'm sure a lot of people listening think that sounds crazy. Um, but I think they truly thrive working together as a couple. Um, and we're just going to learn about, you know, how they've immersed herself into this new community, open this brick and mortar business and kind of how they thrive through things like COVID moving. Um, they also built their own house on their property. Um, just a super dynamic couple that are just always bringing people together here in the community. It's a super fun conversation. So let's jump into it. Hey guys, welcome back to That's Wild. So today we are super excited. We get to talk to um, business owners, entrepreneurs, but also really good friends um, of mine and of the podcast, uh, Tiffany and Tyler Howard. So welcome to That's Wild, you guys. Hello. Hey. Hi, for having us. Yeah, so for those people that are just tuning in, uh, well, first of all, I'll give you kind of a spiel. You know, you know, Alex and I live out here in you know, Brenham, Belleville area. Um, and Tiffany and Tyler moved around the same time I did out to this area from just outside of Houston, Katy. Um, so we all three kind of came from Houston out here in Washington County, Austin County area. Um, so we're definitely going to get into that, but they have become really good friends of ours. And I'm always just very inspired by kind of the journey they've taken um, with their business and as a couple, as a married couple. Um, so we want to just kind of give you guys some inspiration today too of just kind of how they were led to do something different, not only, um, you know, in their business, but for their family. So for those of the people that are tuning in that don't know what Glam Fetty is or who Mr. and Mrs. Glam Fetty are, why don't y'all give us just kind of a, a brief background about who you are and what you guys do? Sure. You want to go first? Yeah, um, husband and wife team. We own a party decor business here in Brenham, Texas. Um, we started this, I think, seven years ago mm -hmm. online. Um, Tiff left the corporate world behind. She blew my mind when she said she could sell tassels online for money and she was going <laughs> to leave her job to do so. Um, started snowballing from there. And then I left my corporate job, I believe, three or four years ago now to three join years. her full time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's been crazy. It's been one of those things where you have an idea and you're like, okay, I think I can do it. You're betting on yourself. And then I'm very risk adverse. Tyler is very like, let's go, let's jump in. And so he really helped push me out of my comfort zone. And he was like, you can do it. You can try it. And if it doesn't work out, that's okay. Go back to what you were doing, but at least give a shot on yourself. And that's what we did. And it was crazy because I started in 2016 and within a year, I was already hiring someone to help me. We were so busy, which is amazing. And then I was hiring another person and then another person. And that's when Tyler was like, well, why don't you quit hiring people and hire me? And yeah. I was like, well, he, you know, he had the oil and gas job. It was great. It was steady. And he was kind of my rock because, again, I'm risk adverse. And I was like, well, what, wait a minute. So we, we gave it some thought. We gave it some time. And before I hired you know, that fourth person, I was like, let's make this a family business. We've always wanted to do something together. We have that kind of, you know, A and B personality. I'm a little bit more in your face. He's a little bit more relaxed. So we have the balance that works to have a relationship and a business together, which I know not everyone can do, or at least all the time. When we were in college, that's when we met. We were in business school and we took a lot of the same classes together we worked together, we lived together. So we were already kind of used to that lifestyle. And once we got to our corporate jobs, we, you know, we went our own ways and we would meet up 
at you know at ends of the day at dinner time. So we kind of miss that uh, more time together, I guess. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so whenever he had said, "Let me join you." It wasn't the scariest thing in the world because we were already used to doing that when we had first met and throughout our college life. Um, so yeah, and then just to keep growing that little little tiny snowflake that turns into that snowball and learning what people like and pivoting with that and just trying to figure out where can we grow from here? What else can we add on to add value to our customers? So that's what we've really been doing. Well, I'm curious though, but what gave you the first spark of the idea to even start doing what you're doing? Because I know a lot of people, they want to start a business, they want to be their own boss, but they don't even know where to start or what to do. What in the world right. gave you the idea to go into party decor? Right. So for me, we had always wanted to do something together. At first, it was a bed and breakfast when we went on our first anniversary in Fredericksburg. We're like, we're going to have our own bed and breakfast. And yeah. then that fizzled out. And then Cleaning service. A cleaning service, a uh, yoga studio. So we've always wanted to have our own business. I know a lot of people have that mindset of, I want to do something for myself. I want to work for myself. But you have to find the perfect fit. So for me, I've always been the crafty, DIY. We hosted a million parties. We would, yeah. we would host the Halloween parties, the bachelorette parties, the baby showers. So it kind of just fell naturally. I was hosting a shower for my best friend. And I was making some cupcake toppers and some tassels that I taught myself to do from Pinterest. And that's when I told Tyler, I really think that I could make these and sell them. And he was like, well, who would buy them? And I was like, <laughs> women will buy them. Women will do anything to save time and have a cute party. So yeah. I started with the Facebook page, just something simple. It was free just to put some pictures out there, gauge interest. And then immediately, oh, can you make first birthday toppers? And I was like, well, absolutely I can. And it becomes a, a repetition like, okay, well, if I can make a first birthday topper, I can make a second birthday topper. And I already had the cardstock and I had the silhouette, which, you know, cuts it all out. So then I just started realizing, okay, I can add on to the, the different genres and the different colors and make a bigger portfolio and just continue growing it that way. But party decor is always something that I love to make on my own. I remember as a kid, one of my favorite birthday parties, my parents through my dad had done this crazy, crazy box and you had to stick your hand in there to get a prize. And it was like wet noodles, but it was like <laughs> thing. nobody wanted to stick their hand in because you thought it was something nasty, yeah. but we've always been kind of a DIY crafty family. So it really just fell into line and anything I make Tyler all of a sudden can make it better or more efficiently. And that's really his accounting background, which has benefited us tremendously. So it's something that we both enjoy to do. And parties are fun. You're helping someone do something exciting every day. So there's never a case of the Sunday scaries. Yeah, around I know. I, I do think that's one of the best things about what we do is like, there's really nothing sad about what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's happy. They're planning something. Yeah, they might be a little stressed, might be a little he hectic at times, but no, it's, it's just always fun. Always upbeat. Yeah. Well, I think that, and we, all, all three of us girls on here right now, I know that we're very into the Enneagram. Um, yeah. And we talk in Enneagram a lot, but I think that's so interesting that, you know, like Tiffany, you're a seven on the Enneagram, mm -hmm. right? And Tyler, mm -hmm. do we know what Tyler is? A six? I've, y'all said six. it, I forgot. He's a six for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think that's so interesting that it's like, even though your husband and wife, it's you, you guys have the kind of personalities that one person does something, has a strength, that maybe the other person that's not really their strength, you know? Right. And so I think that's so interesting. How have y'all found that kind of working together, like working within having really similar or having really different personalities, but kind of being on the same, you know, page and working together. Laughing. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, it just helps a lot because like half the stuff that you have to do for a business that I don't want to do, luckily Tiff wants to do it. <laughs> yeah. And then the other, Half that she doesn't want to do like I like it like I mean I like doing the spreadsheets and our taxes oh. and finances she couldn't care less about any of that yeah. I, I <laughs> for new party decor ideas I mean I'm not that's just not my my part of the business so oh yeah for, from there it's perfect well um, and as an Enneagram 7 I am always ready for the next thing I'm ready for the next party I'm, I'm shooting off somewhere my calendar is full of social events and you know personal events and work events 
And he's like, can we just stay home? <laughs> but it's even that way in the business. It's messy. It's crazy on my side. You, If you came in right now, you would see his and hers desk and know who whose is whose. Yeah. He's the overanalyzer. He's the thinker. But he organizes and he has his spreadsheets for all of our balloon inventory when I'm just throwing balloons in a bag in a drawer. So <laughs> the balance is there and thank goodness we're not both sevens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so let me ask you this. So when you guys started this, cause I think that, you know, especially right now in 2023 people, I mean, it's never been easier to start your own business. Yes. Um, it, you've never had more free resources at your disposal mm -hmm. than you do now. But I think there's definitely an art to all of this. And it's a, it's a huge learning process. And I think that sometimes the thing that holds people back, like you said, we've always been kind of a DIY do it yourself family. We've always worked together. We've always wanted to do that kind of thing. But I think what usually holds people back is I don't know the first thing about this. I don't know where to start. I don't know if there's a market for us. So, I mean, kind of walk us through like what you did when you said, I think that people would want to buy tassels. You know, I think right. the general public would be like, what? And your husband's like, who wants to buy tassels? Like, how did you know, at least at the beginning, there's a market for this. I There's people out there that want this. Was it just homegrown like in your neighborhood and people were word of mouth? Because you guys have grown. I mean, how many followers do you have on Instagram right now? Um, almost 25,000. I mean, 25,000. And that you're saying like, oh yeah, we just decided not that long ago, a few <laughs> years ago to leave our corporate jobs, start this completely online business, you know, and then now have a brick and mortar and have different arms of your business kind of within what you started. But like, how did you know there was a market for this? How did you reach that market and really start building this really profitable, really successful business? I think just like anything in life, you have to build it, your foundation first and one brick at a time. Nobody knows what they're doing, just like parenting, right? We're all trying to figure it out. And that's one thing I realized was not to be intimidated. Don't don't overwhelm yourself trying to learn everything because as a business owner, you do wear a lot of hats. We do a sure. lot of things on a daily basis, but we take our time to do our research, I guess, to figure out what the best thing is. So I was referred over to a business coach. Her name is Sarah Sewell, and she had this group called Flourish, and she was an Etsy expert. She knew all of the SEO. She knew how to make the right listings, the right pictures. And so I thought, you know, coming from a business school background, why I try to reinvent the wheel? Let me go with somebody who can teach me these things and then I can really hit the ground running. So that's what yeah. I did. I joined her group. She has a team of experts. So there was somebody who helped with your copy, somebody who helped show you how to take the right photos. And really, again, it's all about learning the different steps. So I knew Etsy was a platform that had been around, but it was still gaining traction because this was 2016. So I made my first couple of listings. I remember it was Memorial Day. I had my friends over to watch the bachelorette yep. season and I had listed up some bachelorette cupcake toppers and it was, I was brand new. I didn't have any picture. You know, I, I had pictures. I didn't have any reviews. And that night as we were watching the bachelorette, I got my first sale and it was bachelorette cupcake toppers. So after that, it's kind of like when you see the weight start, start dropping on the scale, you kind of get that. Okay. I can do this. What else can yeah. I put out? There? What else yeah. do, will people respond to? And then you get better at taking your photos. And then you start to think, well, maybe I need to put a few more keywords in here. And so I always just said, let's just get out there, get started. We always go, um, what is what is the saying we say? Progress, not perfection. Oh, yeah, it yeah. doesn't have to be perfect. You can yeah. sit there and overanalyze all day long, but you have to just get yourself out I, there. I thought you were going to go humble, shitty, good enough. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we say that. <laughs> <laughs> Little shitty but it's good enough no you have to i mean like you, you could because you'll just push yourself in the dirt trying to get everything perfect and then you won't get anything done right, right like sometimes you just have to realize all right although the lighting wasn't absolutely perfect on this it's good enough people will still like it people will still buy it and we just have to move forward right yeah, yeah. and you have to show yourself as an expert too you have to know what's trending what people are excited about and then they're going to trust you and then the reviews start coming in just like in any business and that's what we've been excited to continue doing in the past seven years is always being in front and having cool options for our customers. For sure. And one thing so, too, to you, kind of to your question, uh, whenever people get stuck, like, Oh, somebody else is always doing this or mm -hmm. whatever. Like, Oh, I don't know. Tiff always had a great thing about just go down the bread aisle. 
do you see how many different kinds of breads there are? And they're still coming out with new bread like yeah. every single day. Yes. Don't ever let that at you, you know? Like, I mean, of course somebody else, no one's really inventing something brand new now. We're all just right. making it differently or, you know, kind of reinventing it just slightly, you know? So, I mean, just, just don't be, don't let that discourage you. So. Yeah. So at what point did y'all decide, okay, we're going to up. <laughs> And move our business to Brenham, Texas, plant roots. <laughs> move our life. Move our whole <laughs> lives to this small yeah. town. Like what yeah. what caused that? What what made so, you decide so to with do that? that? With that, like everybody else, when COVID hit, you know, you're stuck in the house with kids. Um, you know, it's seriously not to talk bad about suburb life at all by any means. But just being so close to everybody around us, just all the time stuck there. We wanted to get out into the country somewhere. I'm from West Texas, smaller cities. We lived on property. I wanted our boys to grow up to be able to, you know, ride four wheelers, shoot guns, do all that fun stuff. So we went out, we bought some property. Then whenever the housing market went nuts there in Houston, Katy area, we thought, well, hey, why don't we just see if we could sell our house and then we'll just move to our property. And before you knew it, we're standing on our property with hammers and nails trying to build a house because our house in Katy sold. And we <laughs> Okay. Moved. And that, I, talk about that a little bit too, because they built their house. Like he built their house that they're living on right now. And I just think, I, honestly, you guys are like the picture of resourcefulness to me because people do that, right? People say like, Hey, okay, I want to leave the city. Like we left the center of the city in Houston. You guys left suburbia, which again, for us, it was like, we're not going to move to the suburbs. We want to be out. We want to yeah. be free and, and have room and all this stuff, especially when everything was keeping us in and COVID and all that stuff. Um, but it's not cheap to do that. <laughs> it's hard. You know, luckily, I think what's so, and you guys know I talk about this and I have a course about this and everything, but what's so amazing about having an online business or starting that way is it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you live. As long as you can have a Wi-Fi connection and, you know, take beautiful photos, you're good. So I think that's so cool that that didn't hold you guys back from that. Um, but you, you bought, how many acres do you guys live on? Uh, just under 17. Just under 17. And then you decided, hey, let's start off in a camper, uh -huh. right? <laughs> and then decided to build your own home. Talk to us about that because I think it is discouraging for people to actually go off. Not that we're off grid out here. I mean, we're definitely not. But to yeah. go off and have those freedoms of like how you do your business, how you raise your kids, what stuff your kids eat, what stuff they're exposed to, that kind of stuff. I think what holds people back is I don't have the income to do this. I mean, right now, Washington County is one of the most expensive counties to live in, which blows my mind, but it is. Yes, it was like number six in 2021, like in the United States, which shocks me. Um, but it's because so many people were like from these, you know, Houston's the third biggest city in the U.S., they're like, yep. I want to get out. I don't want to be too far from a big city, but I want to be far enough out to where I'm not in a suburb. Um, and I think being able to go into it and go like, you know what? Again, having that attitude, like we're just going to do it. We're just going to do it messy, not be perfect, not exactly know what's around the corner, but it's something that we did. So how did you guys decide to do that? And and also just how, did, how in the world did you build your own house? It boggles my mind. <laughs> YouTube. Yep. yep. YouTube. Doctor YouTube. Over. <laughs> it's so true, right? It's so oh, true. Honestly, I mean, I did a lot of other research too, not just YouTube, but you wouldn't believe how many videos and people out there have done exactly what we did. And that's honestly right. where I got inspiration. I, I saw other people that had not necessarily like left a big city per se, but had some acreage and filmed the entire process of them building a small, because let's also let everybody know too, this isn't some 3000 square foot home. It's small, but they did the same thing. They just built their little cabins and I was like, oh, okay, well, I mean, I, I, I sold lumber out of college. So I had some experience with that building industry, being on job sites and seeing things. So I was like, Hey, look, if you know, it's not the end of the world to try this out. Like I'll, I'll just give it a shot. And I mean, if it doesn't work, then I'm sure I could always find a contractor or someone to come in behind me and finish up. Um, so yeah, it was just all about just kind of like being crazy and just taking a plunge. <laughs> And since we were online only at the time, too, we were able to take a sabbatical from exactly. work. So we closed our stores. We gave everyone a warning. Hey, we're going to be taking a little sabbatical because how often do you do that? Especially in your 30s. I mean, that doesn't really exist. So we closed our stores and we took off from 
July to the end of November, July. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So about four months and it was nice. It was just us. We took the kids to school. We really learned what it was like for our grandfathers in the past to build your own homes and, and really put your heart into something. And it re it re not reconnected us, but it definitely connected us in a different way of working hard with your hands and physical labor and the challenges that go with that. And it's not perfect. And this is out of our comfort zone, but we know we can do it. Everyone does this every day. We'll figure it out together. So we did enjoy that aspect. And then, you know, it, it adds more value to your family and your family time. And that was another reason we moved out here was to really slow down. And it's like, you know, you work for yourself, but you work all the time. And yeah. sure. we were getting into that grind where it was almost, you know, worse than the corporate world because yeah, we were working nonstop. Yeah. And it, we, we were working out of our house too. So in, in Katie. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you never left. Mm -hmm. Like it was yeah. always there, which was bad for us because we're both very addictive personalities and we're competitive and we want to work <laughs> better. So like we would just work all the time and we started realizing, hey, like every Saturday and Sunday, instead of going to do stuff with the kids or, you know, doing whatever, we were just winding up, just like going upstairs. And, Watching a movie and rolling tassels. Yep, yeah, just getting yeah. back to it. <laughs> so yeah, so we yeah, also I love that. Play for a little while too. Yeah. So since you guys have made the move, because how long have you moved? Have have you lived out here now? Uh, two years. Yep. Okay. And so first question is, do you think it was the right decision for you and your family and why? And second question, when did you decide to open a brick and mortar business from this online business? How did that come about? <laughs> So we love it out here. I mean, it's, sure. it's the perfect small town feel while you have a lot of the big essentials that you need. We don't have everything. We don't have a great sushi place. You know, yeah. we don't have a it, <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, you, you spend more time. We see our friends way more now than we did back in the Houston yeah. area. We do we a lot more yeah, stuff. We, all do too. we, we have live music here every weekend. There's always a parade going on. So <laughs> what we, thought it would be was exactly what it is and yeah. we love that we i mean we feel and like we do more hands-on stuff with the kids too. for sure and stumbling as you know lauren me stumbling up on the golf course and like now, now i get to do that all the time where whereas in katie i mean i probably golf maybe like once every six months mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. that yeah um so yeah it, it's just it's so much better and everything is close by i mean yeah. it doesn't matter if you're in britain or belleville it's just right there it's convenient to get to all the things that you need yeah. Um, and we love that about if we are driving to the, the library, it takes us two minutes. And if we're going <laughs> to it takes us three minutes. Sorry, so. this dude's trying to deliver a box. Oh, no, you're fine. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, but isn't that so funny that now we're more social living here in a yeah. smaller town? I it's like, I would have never guessed that part, at least. I know. I, know. Same. I, I kind of figured we were going to be out on our property and really never see anybody. And that wasn't the intention. But like, yeah. But I just didn't think I'd be doing something almost every night or, or, you know, like the uh, concert thing we just did this past weekend. And yeah, it's cool. Well, and that was one thing when we were finally done building the cabin and we realized we needed to get back to work, but we didn't have as big of a home here anymore to work out of. We needed to find a place to lease. And once we were looking around, we realized, well, actually, there's nothing like what we do here in Brenham which is the small town and doesn't have all of those things you can just drive down the road for. So we thought, well, why don't we find a place that we can work out of, you know, cause we do our online fulfillment. We ship out six days a week. So we have to have a space to make, and then we can have a little retail store in the front. And at first we thought, okay, we'll just have party decor stuff. It'll be great. But then you kind of pivot and you realize, well, if people are coming in, not everyone is always throwing a party. Maybe I should have, few more items yep. in there so then the evolve evolving comes you know we've added more gift shop items more happy bright colorful so they match our brands they match our vibe but they're not necessarily party stuff and so the things we have online are a lot but a lot of our store have exclusive items that you can only buy in store and yeah. we love that and it's been definitely the journey opening up a brick and mortar because you're learning new things like furniture you know, we're like, oh, we have all the products. We can make items if we need it. But then we're realizing, well, what furniture are we going to use? Yeah, how, are we gonna, yeah. how are we going to scale it? Yeah. You know, it's a blank canvas, which is yep. great, but also really intimidating. Luckily, we already had the online side ready to go. So it was kind of a plug and play for our products. Um, 
but figuring out what people like. Every time somebody walks into the store, we watch them, not in a creepy way, but to see what they, <laughs> what are they gravitating towards? You know, what are they interested in? What are they not interested in? And so yeah. that become a whole new learning process for us. But we like being able to have different arms of our business because if one slows down, you have these other arms yes. moving and you're not ever just going to sit still and sit stagnant. And I think that's something that's very important that a lot of businesses don't realize is you have to constantly be growing in different directions other than putting all of your eggs in one basket. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to talk about that a little bit, like the, the kind of ways that you've grown. Remind me again, so here we have like a chamber, Visit Brenham gave away awards at the end of last year. Y'all had not opened your store yet. So technically nobody really knew what Glamfetti was, but what was the <coughs> award that you guys won? We won the Local Love Award. Yes, for... and it was... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I mean, how they described it was always being willing to show up and help out and be there and be happy. And I couldn't have described what I want to be represented as, as more than that. And it was, it was crazy. It was very unexpected, but it just really goes to show that this is the spot for us. We love yeah. being out here. If we were in a bigger city, we couldn't make a, such of an impact as we do because yeah. There's always people that want to do things, but there's not as much going on. And so we throw these events, we do these big things and people show up and then it just drives us more to do something new and exciting that we can give True. back to the community because they've given us so much. Well, and I want to, I want to mention that a little bit because before you guys, it took a while to open that store. We have a lot of historical issues here. Yeah, we want to keep everything historic in Brenham right. and it uh -huh. took a long time. Um, but I want to mention that like winning that award, that is so what you guys were before you were even open. Everyone knew who Glam Fetty was. Everyone was in. And I think like before, I don't know how many setups you were doing at parties and bridal showers, but right. here you were like the bridal shower party girl that came and set up. I know that you've got really amazing clients that do multiple events, not, not just, you know, common, you know, parties, but like corporate events, big organizational events, that kind of thing. And I think that's so, I, I think you come by it very naturally, but I think it's so smart that because this is a small town, you really do get to know so many business owners and so many, you know, other people that are doing lots of things. And it just kind of word of mouth, the more you get to know people, the more people know who you are. And I just love that before you guys even opened, and by the way, we should say when they did open, there's a line around the door in small town, <laughs> you know, Brenham, downtown Brenham, because so many people were dying to see like, oh, we've seen them at parties. We've seen them at events. What's the store yeah. going to be like, you know? But I think that was so smart that, and you're right, you really have a lot more leverage as a business, as maybe opening a brick and mortar business. For those of you guys that are listening that have online businesses right now, in a small town when you're really getting to know where you fit. Um, and even before you you have it, right, to give as a product, you, you know where you fit, you know the people, and you engage in the community so much that it's just a natural, of course we're going to, of course, we're going to go see you guys. Of course, we're going to get to know what your next offer is essentially. Right. right. And I think that also, I want you to talk a little bit about that because I think you guys have been so smart in um, not just being a place, but being kind of an idea, um, like giving people an event to go to. I want to talk about just for a moment, and I don't know when we're going to release this. It'll probably be in September, but um, Tiffany and Tyler decided to host along with our other business owner friends that own uh, Westwood Cinemas here in um, in uh, Brenham, the Landritz, to host a Barbie premiere party. And it was so popular. I've never seen so many of our friends and like community members go crazy. I mean, we had girls in their teens and women post-menopausal <laughs> saying like, hey, I'm ordering my outfit. I'm going to be Malibu Barbie. I'm going to be pajama Barbie. I'm going to be, it was so wild. I don't think even you guys thought it was going to go like it did. It helped no, it both them and, you know, the cinema business. Talk a little bit about like how you decided, you know what? Yeah, we're a party store, but there's so much more we can do. There's so much more we can put on. There's so much more we can bring to the community. Absolutely. It's funny you asked that because we were just talking about this. We were saying that we're, we feel kind of like a, a rare combination because we help decorate parties, but we also like to host the parties too. So it's like a winning combination 
because we're like, okay, what event can we throw next? What can we do that's exciting? <laughs> and we knew Barbie was coming out. And this goes back to the transparency. Not everything is a long thought out plan, okay? We, we plan that two weeks before Barbie, but sometimes in your gut, especially if you have that entrepreneurial spirit, you're like, this is it. I know it's gonna be great. Just like those tassels, just yep. like what I was making. <laughs> and so I, I didn't know all the details, but I knew I just had to go for it, reach out to the theater. Hey, can, can we do this? Is this okay? And they were on board. And that's what's really important to us is we like to have that win-win community effort. You know, it's a win for us. It's a win for the theater. It's a win for the people out here because they get for to sure. do something fun, especially because there are a lot of people that have moved out here from bigger towns and they might miss those big parties or those big yeah. crazy events. And we've always tried to make it known who we are, introduce ourselves, but we're not pretending. We are naturally bubbly <laughs> We do like to meet new people. So we are always trying to partner with other people that we know we can add value to. We do a lot of charity events. We work at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we've worked with All Things Acres for some of their things. So anytime anyone says, hey, can you help with this? We are always glad to do it. We don't always broadcast that we're doing the charity work, but behind the scenes, we're always looking for the next thing that we can help with. But I think that's what's important with a small business. For sure. Is have the community know who you are, add value, offer help. Don't always just be trying to make money because at the end you're not going to succeed. You have to really live and breathe what you do and give back in a way that um, is real. And people will be endeared to you once they know your story, once they know, you know, if you have a family and you, they see my kids are in the store right now, <laughs> they're running around. But if they know that this isn't just something come and go, this is important to your family, they're going to feel inspired and important to come yeah. back and work with you or sh like you had said, share who you are and refer somebody else and have you gone by the store? It looks so neat. So that's what we are all about. And again, another reason why we love being here is the, the people are amazing and everyone truly seems to want to help each other, which is rare, I feel like. Yeah, it is. It's nice. That's awesome. So what's next on the horizon? Do y'all have any other big ideas coming up soon for everybody? <laughs> you know, we always have a million ideas. Sometimes it's two weeks before we give it. Exactly. The day before, we'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, we we want to do monthly events here at the store. So whether it's a paint-by-colored night or make your own bedazzled coaster or just something fun <laughs> and different yeah. that people are like, I, you know, I could do that. That sounds like something neat. Yeah. We're always trying to plan some new stuff for the store just so that we can, again, add that value back to the community, something fun and exciting. We just finished doing um, like a styled shoot of some new products. So we do all of that in-house as well. So we design our tablescapes. We, we have a bunch of fake cakes that we use, <laughs> fake cupcakes as well. So we're designing a bunch of new products. We have a Rolodex of uh, new things launching, a lot of boho, some Barbie-themed stuff, um, just really cool items. Yep. So we're growing that. Uh, what else are we doing? Well, the movie thing was such a hit. We definitely want to do something like that again. Yes. That was a yes. blast. We're playing fun stuff for the fall. I mean, and Halloween, that's got to be something. Yeah. Hocus Pocus? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Absolutely. Make a like, big coffin box or something that people could walk in to take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Barbie box was a hit. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get really good at making those boxes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> box themed item right <laughs> yeah <laughs> well awesome well you guys tell us um for anybody listening where can they interact with glamfetti where can they find you guys order things get inspired where can we find you guys online well we're always reachable by email if anyone needs help with party planning or ideas it's tiffany at glamfetti.com tyler at glamfetti.com if you are on Instagram, it's Glamfetti Co. Glamfetti was already taken. So. <laughs> Glamfetti Co. I tried to get it. I couldn't get it. You know how that goes. Yes. Um, Facebook is the same thing, Glamfetti Co. If you're a Facebook kind of person. We also are really heavily involved in our Pinterest. I don't know if anyone loves Pinterest as much as I do. I remember getting my wisdom teeth taken out and just spamming Pinterest one day years <laughs> and years ago. And it is still my favorite thing. I think we have... 3 million views a month on our Pinterest yeah, board like because we're always oh, pinning new, new parties. So if you're going to a bachelorette and you're like, Oh, I need a couple of disco Barbie themes. I got a board for that. Look on there <laughs> and or you can find us TikTok. We're on TikTok. You can see Tyler dancing. Trying. Tyler dances. <laughs> the 
on TikTok. You have to go see it. It's just Glam Fetty. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah. Awesome. Are you dancing too? <laughs> I don't think I dance. Only <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Well, thank y'all so much for joining us today. Yes. And for anybody out there listening, um, just so inspiring. I just, I love watching you guys do what you do every day together as a family, as a couple. Um, and just for anyone listening, you can do this. If you have a passion, if you know something is going to go. And like Tiff said, if you know that you're going to end up loving to do it every single day, there's a market. It's not unsaturated. You can find your way. You can even move out to small town, Texas. And even grow even further, you know? So don't let the fear hold you back. Um, definitely, I'd love for you guys to go follow um, Tyler and Tiffany at Glenn Fetty. But thanks for coming on, you guys. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of That's Wild, the podcast with Lauren and Alex. I am so excited to keep on going with this podcast because it's like our weekly girls night in and you're invited to the most fun-filled chat about the wildest stuff happening out there. Think of us as your BFFs who spill the tea on all the crazy things you didn't even know you needed to know. And just like the awesome friend you just heard from, we've got a lineup of fabulous guests waiting to dish out the juiciest stories and the coolest, inspiring information. We just want to leave you inspired, motivated, or simply mind blown by something that'll have you texting your friends like, did you know this? Now here's the deal, lovely listeners. We want to hear from you too. So grab your phones, slide into our voicemail with your thoughts, questions, or even your own wild stories. And if you've been having as much fun as we are, why not share the love? A five-star review is like the best virtual high five we could ask for. Don't forget to hit that follow button so you never miss out on our weekly girls night. You know, you don't want to miss it. Thanks for joining us today, friends. Until next time, keep it fun, keep it fabulous, and keep the good vibes flowing with That's Wild, the podcast.